Hello, dear students. Uh, in the last period, we have studied about the method of preparation of various uh, alkanes. Now we want to study about the chemical properties of alkanes. So let us study about the various chemical properties of alkanes. First, we shall study about the halogenation. On halogenation, alkyl halides are obtained by the reaction of alkanes with halogen in the presence of light. So here you can see that uh, methane when reacts with uh, chlorine, it gives uh, chloromethane and HCl. Same way ethane when it reacts with chlorine, it gives us the chloroethane. So let us uh, write the name. This is uh, chloromethane. This is chloroethane. That is what we can write. My dear students, we have already studied the mechanism for this reaction as the free radical mechanism. So this type of reaction follow the free radical mechanism. This is what we have studied when we were uh, studying about or when we have studied about the uh, substitution reactions. So that is what we have studied. We know that halogens means fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. So it is found that the rate for the reaction of alkanes with halogen is in the order of fluorine reacts very fast than chlorine. Then the reactions of bromine is slower than the fluorine and chlorine, but the reactions of uh, iodine are the most slow reactions in case of the halogenation or halogenation type of substitution reactions. Now, if we have the rate of replacement of hydrogen, we have seen that during the substitution reaction, the hydrogen is replaced by the halogen, and that is how the halogenation takes place, which is the substitution of hydrogen. So here we can see that if we have tertiary alkane, then the uh, rate of reaction is very fast, then secondary, then primary, and then methyl. So the reaction of methyl is the slowest one, and the reactions of tertiary is very fast. That is what we can easily understand from this text. So halogenation reactions of fluorine is too violent to be controlled, and that is why this type of substitution reactions with fluorines are not preferred for the preparation of fluoroalkanes. Fluorination of alkane may be explosive or uncontrollable. So for fluorination of alkane, another methods should be used. Then when it comes to the iodination, iodination is a very slow process and it is a reversible in nature. So if, see, methane is allowed to react with a Iodine, it gives us a iodomethane. But here you can see that apart from iodomethane, we have hydroiodic acid, which is formed. Now, according to the Lee Chatelier's principle, this hydroiodic acid needs to be removed. As this hydroiodic acid has to be removed, my dear students, we can, uh, we can use something that removes the hydroiodic acid to get a better yield of a product. Iodination of alkane is done in a presence of oxidizing agents like HiO3 or HNO3. So when it comes to the HiO3 or HNO3, which reacts with the Hi hydrogen iodides, thus product is removed according to the Lee Chatelier's principle, and more product, which is the desired product, that is the iodomethane or iodoalkane can be formed. You can see here that we have the reactions of hydrogen iodide or per uh, HiO3, when it reacts with the hydrogen iodide or hydrogen, uh, hydrogen iodide, it gives us the iodine and water. Same way, my dear students, if you use HNO3, it produces uh, HiO3, which again reacts with this HiO3 reacts with Hi and gives us the iodine and water. So this is how um, in the presence of the uh, HiO3 or HNO3, 
uh, we can get the better yield of product. Now let's move and understand something else, my dear students. Uh, we have been studying about the chemical properties of alkanes. So let us first, uh, let us study the second property that is combustions. So alkanes on heating, uh, in the presence of uh, air, produces carbon dioxide, water vapor, and a large amount of heat. Sometimes light is also produced, my dear students. And for that, we have the general formula of alkane, that is CnH2n plus 2. This general formula of alkane, that is CnH2n plus 2, reacts with 3n plus 1 by 2O2. That gives us NCO2 and N plus 1 h 2 same way, my dear students, we have methane that reacts with the air that produces carbon dioxide and water vapor. If we have C4H10, then we need to have 13 by 2O2. That gives us 4CO2 and 5H2O. Please remember that in both these cases, huge amount of heat is also produced and sometimes light is also produced. When uh, air is present for combustion, so air required for combustion is not sufficient. If air present for combustion is not sufficient, incomplete combustion takes place. And when there is an incomplete combustion, we get carbon black. So let us study how we get carbon black. For example, if methane undergoes the incomplete combustion in the presence of insufficient air, it produces carbon black and water. So this is how, my dear students, we study the production of a carbon black. This carbon black is utilized in the uh, production of ink mainly, especially the ink for printers and the other purpose. So let me uh, tell you about the carbon black, my dear students. This carbon black is generally utilized for This carbon black is utilized to make uh, ink and it is used as a filler into the tires. Uh, this ink may be normal ink or it may be the printing ink. And this is how it goes up. Now let us study about the other ones. We have controlled oxidation. Alkanes on regulated supply of air or dioxygen at high pressure give different products in the presence of different catalysts. Let us understand this, how it produces different products in the presence of different catalysts. Uh, if we have the catalyst that is CO at 573 Kelvin and 100 atmospheric pressure, methane, in the presence of oxygen gives us methanol. But if we use the molybdenum oxide as a catalyst, my dear students, methane and oxygen combines to give us the methanol. So this is how we can easily understand that there are different catalysts with the same reactant gives us different product when the reactant proportion is also altered. Now let us see what happens when we have the oxidation in the other manner. Suppose we have ethane, which is oxidized in the presence of uh, uh, manganese acetate, which is a catalyst. So in the presence of manganese acetate catalyst, ethane is converted into the ethanoic acid. Same way, my dear students, if we have the compound 2-methylpropane under the oxidation with KMnO4, it gives us the 2-methylpropane 2-all. So, this is how, my dear students, we get the various products that are formed. Chemical properties of alkanes we have been studying. Now we are going to study about the isomerization. So let us study about the isomerization. Normal alkanes or linear alkanes on treating with the anhydrous aluminum chloride and hydrogen chloride gas undergoes the reaction called isomerization and give branched chain alkanes. So let us see how it happens. If we have uh, the methane, ethane, propane, butane, pentane, and hexane. So if we have hexane, my dear students, this hexane when heated with the anhydrous AlCl3 and 
HCl gas, it gives us the various fractions. One of them is 2 methyl pentane, another one is 3 methyl pentane. And apart from this, there may be some other products also formed. But please remember, my dear students, that these two are the major products. And that is why we have shown the major products in this case. So these two are the major products and this is what it is known as the isomerization. So linear, you can see that the uh, uh, product formed have the same number of carbon. All these products have six carbons, but the, the, the linear chain has turned to be the branched chain. And this is how the isomerization takes place in the presence of anhydrous AlCl3 as well as the hydrochloric acid gas. Then my dear students, we want to study about the aromatization. Uh, let us see how aromatization takes place. What is aromatization? First, we need to know that. So for aromatization, my dear students, aromatic compounds are formed. And these aromatic compounds are generally the simplest aromatic compound is benzene. So <clears throat> by using the normal alkanes, having six or more number of carbon atoms, on heating to 773 Kelvin and at 10 to 20 atmospheric pressure in the presence of Cr2O3 or vanadium V2O5 or uh, MO2O3 with uh, supported over the alumina, alumina is Al2O3, we get, get dehydro, uh, dehydrogenated and cyclizes to give us the benzene and it's a homologous. So let us see if we have normal hexane and if it is heated at 773 Kelvin and 10 to 20 atmospheric pressure, it gives us the Cr2O3, V2O5 uh, or uh, in the presence of uh, the catalyst, Cr2O3, V2O5 or MO2O3, we get benzene. So you can see that if we have the six carbon, we get benzene. Now suppose we have seven carbons. So if we have normal heptane, CS3, CS2, 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 CS3. If it is heated in the presence of either uh, Cr2O3 or V2O5 or MO2O3 at 773 Kelvin and at 10 to 20 atmospheric pressure, my dear students, uh, we get the another homologous of benzene. This is uh, homologous of benzene. which is known as toluene. So you can see that on benzene, we have methyl group present. That is what it is known as toluene. It can also be called as a methyl benzene, my dear students. We can call it as a methyl benzene. So this is how we study about the aromatization. Still, my dear students, we have more chemical properties of alkanes to be studied. We have been studying about the chemical properties of alkanes. We have the next property, which is the reaction with steam. Methane on reaction with steam, my dear students, produces the mixture of carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas. Please remember the mixture of carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas. This mixture is known as the syn gas or synthesis gas or water gas. And this syn gas or synthesis gas or water gas, my dear students, is uh, used to produce various compounds. Let us study the reaction. Methane, when it reacts with uh, water vapor, it should be gas. It gives us the mixture of carbon monoxide and hydrogen. This mixture is known as the syn gas, synthesis gas or water gas. Reaction is done at uh, 1273 Kelvin temperature in the presence of catalyst nickel. Then, my dear students, we have the next property to study about uh, alkane, that is the pyrolysis or cracking. Higher alkanes on heating to the higher temperature decomposes into small fragments. This process is known as pyrolysis or cracking. So if you have hexane, my dear students, that is a C6H14, if it is heated at 773 Kelvin, the first fragment is hexene and hydrogen. The second fragment is uh, butene and ethane. And the third fragment may be the uh, propene, butene and methane. So this is how my dear students, we get the various fragmentation. 
and this is what it is known as the pyrolysis or cracking. My dear students, this pyrolysis or cracking is a very important reaction and it, it can be utilized to the various purposes. Let us study about the various uses of this pyrolysis or cracking. So let's have a look to that. Applications of pyrolysis or cracking, that is what we want to study, my dear students. Pyrolysis or cracking is used to prepare oil, gas, or petrol gas from the kerosene oil or petrol. Please remember it is used to convert the uh, kerosene or petrol into the gases. So by fragmentation, we get the various gases. A constituent of kerosene oil, the name is uh, on heating to 973 Kelvin in the presence of palladium, platinum, or nickel catalyst, this is the constituent of kerosene is heptane. Sorry, the constituent of kerosene is uh, dodecane, which on heating with the platinum, palladium, or nickel at 973 Kelvin, my dear students, it undergoes the pyrolysis or cracking and gives us the heptane, a pentene, and various other products. So by uh, use from this reaction, you can easily understand the um, pyrolysis or cracking, my dear students. So here, my dear student, we uh, completes the various uh, chemical properties of alkene. Now, my dear students, we want to study about a very important physical property of alkene. This is what it is, the very important physical property, my dear student. And that is what it is known as the conformations of alkanes. So let's study about the conformations of alkanes. We know that alkanes are the compounds which are saturated compounds and all the bonds in alkanes are single bond. Thus, my dear students, uh, in alkanes, there are carbon-carbon single bond presence. And we know that uh, carbon carbon single bond around carbon carbon single bond there is a possibility of rotation so uh, due to the free rotation or possible rotation around the carbon carbon single bond various arrangements of atom in the space are possible which are known as the conformations or conformers or rotomers so due to the rotation which is possible around the carbon-carbon single bond. We get the various arrangements into the space. We get the various arrangement into the three dimension by rotating the various atoms that is bonded to carbon. And whatever the arrangement, the whatever the various arrangement possible in the space, they are known as the conformations or conformers or rotamers. Alkanes may have infinite conformers. So by doing a very small infinite number of rotation, we can have infinite number of conformers. It is necessary to remember that rotation around the carbon-carbon single bond is not completely free. So when we rotate the atoms, it is not completely free, means energy is required. So when we do the various kind of rotations, the energy is required, it is not absolutely free. The energy is being utilized to get the various conformations or various rotation. So uh, it is hindered by the energy barrier of 10, 1 to 20 kilojoule per mole. So um, starting from 1 kilojoule per mole to 20 kilojoule per mole kind of energy is required when we do the various rotations around the carbon carbon single bond due to the weak repulsive interaction between the adjacent bond each other. So, you know, there, there are the electron clouds available and this electron cloud cause the repulsion and that repulsion cause the uh, or requires the energy for the various rotation, my dear students. So please remember that uh, the carbon carbon double or uh, carbon carbon single bond or rotation around carbon-carbon single bond is not absolutely free. It requires some energy and the energy ranges from one kilojoule per mole to 20 kilojoule per mole. Now let us understand 
uh, uh, one very important definition, which is known as the torsional strain. So what is this torsional strain? Let us understand. It's an important definition, my dear students, and very interesting to understand. A type of repulsive interaction takes place between the electron cloud of bonds when rotation is performed around the carbon-carbon single bond that affects the stability of conformation is called torsional strain or torsional strain. So let us uh, try to understand it one by one, my dear students. What is torsional strain? So from that, uh, the word itself, we can understand it is a strain. It is a kind of force. But here we need to know that it is a repulsive force or it is a repulsive interaction that takes place when we do the various rotations. This is what it is because of the uh, repulsive forces that is present into the uh, various clouds or electron clouds of the bond. When we perform this rotation, these kind of repulsive forces require some energy and this energy we apply to for the rotation around the single carbon carbon single bond and this amount uh, this torsional strain actually affects the stability also of the conformation and this type of force is known as the torsional strain so please remember my dear students lower the torsional strain more is the energy of the uh, conformation so uh, when the electron clouds or when the bond, when we do the rotation and when the bond comes near to each other, the torsional strain increases and this repulsive torsional strain or this repulsive interaction make the uh, conformation unstable. But when the, when, the, uh, when the atoms are far away from each other, the torsional strain decreases and that is what it increases the stability of conformation. So those conformations which are most stable, they have the minimum torsional strain and those conformations which are least stable, they have got the maximum torsional strain. That is how we can understand. Conformations are expressed or represented in two different manner. Let us see what are the various different manners. First is known as the so horse projection Another is known as the Newman projection. So let us see what is Soho's projections. In this projection, molecule is weed along the um, molecular axis. So actually in a Newman projection, uh, the, the molecule is the viewed along the um, molecular axis, but here viewed from the side side. So you can see that this is the uh, molecular axis, my dear students, and we have been watching it from the side. You can see that. So view along the not molecular axis, my dear students, but uh, view along the carbon-carbon single bond. So here you can see that we have this carbon-carbon single bond and along this carbon-carbon single bond, my dear students, we watch it or we see it here. That is what we can easily understand. So when we look into, or when we look along the carbon-carbon bond, carbon-carbon single bond, when we look along the carbon-carbon single bond, we can have this kind of a confirmation or we, we, we will have the so horse projection. But my dear students, whenever we uh, look at, uh, from the side or whenever we look along the molecular axis, we will get the Newman projections. Uh, we will understand it better with a few of the pictures, my dear students. So you can see here, confirmations of ethane. Now we want to study about the various uh, confirmations of ethane. There are various types of confirmation. We have staggered confirmation, we have eclipsed confirmation, or we have skew or Gauche conformations. We want to study about the conformation of ethane. So you can see that ethane is your CS3, CS3, uh, carbon carbon single bond has got uh, hydrogen around it. Uh, my dear students, whenever we see it from here, we will get Newman projection. But when we're, whenever we see it from the side 
here along the bond, we will have the Sohor's projections. Let us see and study it. First, we have the staggered confirmation. In staggered confirmations, the atoms are exactly opposite in direction. So they are most far away atoms are far away. And that is why this uh, staggered confirmation is the most stable confirmation. It, it, it is having the lowest energy and we can even say that torsional strain is minimum. So my dear students, when you watch it from here, you can see the Sohor's projection. Actually, we are looking along the carbon-carbon uh, uh, single bond. And that is how you can see that this hydrogen is exactly opposite 180 degree to this hydrogen. Same way, this hydrogen and this hydrogen are exactly 180 degree to each other. And that is why this is the most stable confirmation. You can see here the Newman projection. In Newman projection, we we can we we see the um, we see it from here, my dear students. You can see that our I is available over here. So we first see this three car. This we we just see this carbon and this hydrogen. This portion we cannot see it into the Newman projection clearly, and that is why we have. You know, we have shown only the uh, circle where we can see this hydrogen, this hydrogen, and this hydrogen. We have a carbon here that we can see it clearly. But the next carbon or the second carbon is hidden, is completely hidden with this carbon because we are just watching it from the uh, angle, uh, from the axis, and that is why the another carbon is hidden. And then we can see the hydrogen. You can see that this hydrogen and this hydrogen make 180 degree. This hydrogen and this hydrogen also make 180 degree. This hydrogen and this hydrogen even make the 180 degree. So these hydrogen are maximum, maximum far away as it is possible. So they have possible, maximum possible distance. And that is why this is the most stable confirmation. Now, my dear student, we want to study about the another type of confirmation, which is known as the eclipsed confirmation. You know, the meaning of eclipse is hidden. So here what happens, my dear student, that if you look from the side way or if you look it um, along the axis, my dear students, what happens that you can see it, you can see both the carbon very clearly and you can even see all the hydrogen and you can see that this hydrogen is exactly hidden to this hydrogen. This hydrogen is exactly and this hydrogen, they are almost arranged in the parallel manner. So when you see for the Newman projection, my dear students from here, what you understand is this carbon is exactly hidden and we cannot see the another carbon. This hydrogen is hidden with this hydrogen. So this all the hydrogens are exactly behind the another hydrogen that we can easily understand into the Newman projection that we can see this carbon, but the next carbon we cannot see. You can see that these both hydrogens are actually eclipsed. They are actually hidden with each other, but just for, you know, uh, just to understand it well, we have uh, made the dotted lines so that we can guess the another hydrogen present exactly behind the hydrogen that we can see it clearly. So here the bond angle is zero. Bond angle between these two hydrogen is almost zero and this type of confirmation is known as the eclipsed confirmation. My dear students here, these atoms are very near to each other the space between them is minimum and that is why it, it has got the highest energy, uh, highest torsional strain. And that is why it is uh, least stable. So please remember my dear students that 
the eclipsed conformation is the least stable conformation and it has got the highest energy. So now, my dear students, we are aware of the two major conformation that we have seen. One is known as the uh, staggered conformation and another one is known as the eclipsed conformation. All the other conformation that is between the staggered conformation and all the other conformations, all the other conformations possible between the staggered between the staggered and eclipse conformation are known as What do we call them? It's quite simple. We call them Gauche or skew conformations. So now you can see it here that, you know, this hydrogen, if we have a hydrogen over here, then we have a carbon. Here also we have carbon and we have the various hydrogens. So you can see that this hydrogen has got this angle. If we, and this hydrogen has got this angle. This is the kind of angle that has been produced between these two hydrogen. They are not exactly, you know, uh, behind each other, but they have some angles. And that is what you can easily understand by looking into the Newman projections. This is so horse projections. But in the Newman projection, my dear students, you can see that we are, we are rotating and uh, in the staggered, the, the hydrogen was uh, supposed to be here into in, in the case of the staggered conformation. Then by rotation, my dear students, this hydrogen has uh, reached here. So this is how we can easily understand the possibility of the uh, Gauss or skew kind of uh, conformation. So when we do the rotation, my dear students, due to this rotation from staggered or eclipsed, we can get the various types of confirmation formed. And you can see here that I have tried to show you both the projections, uh, Sohor's projection as well as the uh, um, Newman projection here, you can see that. So when it was staggered, when, when the rotation takes place, this hydrogen moves from this place to this place and we have got the another confirmation. That is what it is known as the Gauche or skew kind of confirmation. Now to understand it well, let us study it along the uh, along its energy. So it's uh, very interesting to study these conformations along the energy. You can see here, my dear students, that we have a, a staggered conformation. This is the staggered one. Now we we do some rotation in this direction. So you can see that this hydrogen, this three hydrogen that we have seen, they are moving and then they have reached to another position you can see here. So by doing this kind of rotation, this hydrogen has reached near to this hydrogen, which is present over here. We do not move this hydrogen. Please remember that these are not moving. So this, we keep them still and then we just observe the other hydrogen moving along the axis. So we just are rotating this kind of, this hydrogen which I have shown you, they are rotating. And then we have got the, from staggered, we have got this skew. Now when this hydrogen comes exactly behind the another hydrogen, They are actually exactly behind each other. And this condition, we call it as an eclipsed conformation. So you can see that when the rotation start, 
the staggered conformation has got the lowest energy. When the staggered turns into skew, they have higher energy than the staggered. But in eclipsed conformation, we have got the highest energy. So you can see that the energy is highest. Even the torsional strain is also highest. Now, my dear students, again, we have to move this hydrogen in uh, the same direction. We are moving it. We are moving into the clockwise direction. So we have clockwise rotation, my dear students. So again, when we have the clockwise rotation, this hydrogen moves and comes to the another side of uh, the steel hydrogen. And again, we get the another skew or gauche kind of conformation. And then again, you know, when the distance again moves and when they have the uh, angle of uh, 180 with this hydrogen and angle of uh, somewhat around um, 90 with this hydrogen, and that is what it makes the uh, hydrogens to give us the another staggered confirmation. So this is how, my dear students, we can explain the stability as well as the energy of the various kinds of the confirmations. And from this explanation, we can now easily understand that the energy of eclipsed is highest, then the energy of skew is higher than the staggered and the order of or the energy of staggered is the minimum. So order of energy, we can write eclipse is greater than skew is greater than staggered. But when it comes to stability, my dear students, we can easily say that staggered is the most stable kind of confirmation. Then we have the skew. Skew is even more uh, stable than the eclipsed kind of confirmations. So this is how, my dear students, we can understand the various uh, confirmations. Now, let me tell you once again about a few other definitions. Let us uh, study another definition, which is known as the torsional angle. Angle of rotation about the carbon-carbon bond is called the torsional angle or dihedral angle. So these are the important uh, definitions. Please learn these definitions. I would suggest that the angle of rotation about the carbon-carbon bond is called the torsional angle or dihedral angle. Then we have the next one, my dear students. Uh, all of all these confirmations of ethane, staggered form has the least torsional strain and eclipsed form has the maximum torsional strain. The energy difference between the two extreme forms is of the order 12.5 kilojoule per mole. So my dear students, if you find out the energy difference between the uh, staggered conformation and eclipse conformation of ethane, we would come to know that the energy difference is in the order of 12.5 kilojoule per mole, which is very small. It's a very small amount of energy difference. Even at ordinary temperatures, ethane molecule gains thermal or kinetic energy sufficient to overcome this energy barrier of 12.5 kilojoule per mole through intermolecular collisions. So my dear students, when these ethane molecules, they undergo the intermolecular collisions, these collision are even of the higher order energy or the energy of collision is even more than the 12.5 kilojoule per mole. And thus this requirement of the rotation is overcome by the just the intermolecular collisions. And thus the energy required for rotation can be overcome by the ethane molecule. And that is why the rotation in ethane molecule are found to be very easy and are found to be almost free. That is what it is written into the next uh, uh, text, my dear students. Thus, it can be said that rotation about carbon-carbon single bond in ethane is almost free for all practical purposes because the energy required for this rotation can be easily obtained even just by the intermolecular collisions. And that is why this uh, rotation is considered to be almost free. It is. It has not been possible to separate and isolate different conformational isomers of ethane. So please remember, my dear students, that we cannot separate 
the staggered conformation of ethane, eclipse conformation of ethane, or Gauss conformation of ethane with each other. They are they can be understood or they can be seen, but it is not possible to separate them in the practical manner. I hope, my dear students, you have enjoyed the studies. Uh, I wish you a very happy learning.